there welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video today I'm going to showcase 11 of what in my opinion after all this is just my opinion what are in my opinion the top 11 cheap piston filling fountain pens now you may well ask and well you may but professor why 11 simple I like nice round numbers and you may well ask and well you may but professor Doug what do you mean by cheap and I'll tell you precisely what I mean by cheap right now. So before I get to my top 11 list of cheap piston filling fountain pens, let's discuss what I mean by cheap. Cheap is usually a derogatory characterization of a product, usually made in China, of dubious manufacturing quality and made with inferior grade materials. That's not Wikipedia, that's me, Dougapedia. Look that up in your Funkin' Wagnalls. What? There's something wrong with your Funkin' Wagnalls. The monarchy used to mean anything made in Japan because after the Second World War, in order to help Japan see the error of their obviously backward Eastern ways and to become more like the United States as a capitalist, consumer-driven, free market society, the US helped Japan by getting them to copy the best example of capitalism in the world, the US. And that's what they did in spades. Everything they made post-war was considered cheap Japanese crap by North American consumers. Ooh, made in Japan, ugh. But the Japanese are hardworking, industrious, and very clever as a society. And it wasn't long before Japan surpassed the US in the quality of their products like cars, stereos, televisions, cameras, etc., etc., etc. Well, now the same thing's happening 50 years later with China. Made in China used to mean cheap crap you'd get at Walmart and Dollarama. Well, actually, that's still true, as most of the stuff at Walmart and Dollarama is cheap Chinese crap. But increasingly, Chinese manufacturing is some of the best in the world. Made in China doesn't always mean inferior anymore. I mean, inferior to what? Who? Japan? Korea? Germany? Italy? A case in point is this Hongdian N7. This is as well built as anything I own. This Italian Tivaldi, for example, it's a little bit better than this one. Or the Japanese Platinum President. Or this Lamy Studio. Well, actually, I'll give the nod to the Lamy here. This is a well-made pen. So what I really mean is inexpensive. But top 10 inexpensive piston-filling fountain pens wouldn't fit on the thumbnail. And besides, it wouldn't get as many clicks either. So it is, quote, inexpensive but well-built piston filling fountain pens and that lets out every other pen maker but Chinese and Taiwanese and lest you think that these pens are made by poor children in rags toiling in the sweatshops at slave wages get into the 21st century already Mao died 46 years ago and China has a large consumer oriented middle and upper middle class now just because they live in a totalitarian state with a government that is actively dismantling their individual rights and freedoms wait no, yes, yes, we're talking about China, right? Yeah, yeah, China. Have you seen some of the manufacturing plants that build most of your everyday products from your coffee makers to your toasters, your furniture, your clothes, your dishes, your utensils, your backpacks, and even your fountain pens? Have you seen those? They are some of the cleanest, most efficient, and most sophisticated manufacturing plants on the planet. And that being said, let's choose the best, cheapest, piston filling fountain pen with which we can write our manifestos for democratic world freedoms in our Chinese made pocket planners with comfort on a modest budget. Welcome back to those of you who skipped the rant. I've selected 11 piston fillers and ranked them by price from the highest price under $50 to the lowest. Once I've shown you the 11 pens, I'll rank them from worst to best using my personally invented empirical objective analysis technique filtering their various qualities through my very own personal opinion. Of course, your mileage may vary. From the most expensive to the least expensive, here is the list. Number one, at $48, the Hongdian N7. At $46, the Hongdian N6. At $40, the Tianzi Acrylic Piston. 
at $38. The Wingsong 629. The Lorelei 667 at $38. The Twisby Echo at $32. The Wingsong 699 at $28. The Majon T5 at $26. The Moonman T1 at $26. The Pen BBS 309 at $25. And to round out the Even 11, the Wingsong 618 at 13 bucks. So knock yourself out finding different prices from different parts of the planet in rubles, kopecks, bitcoin, whatever. I'll give it all the attention it deserves. Now the fun part, the objective analysis. This is where I put my thinking cap on and analyze every relevant factor that determines a good pen from a crappy pen. They all write, so that's a given. They all fit in my hand and they are all relatively attractive in that they don't look like this. <laughs> Now I'll present my list of what I consider the best to the worst of this group. Agree or disagree? I don't care. This is my channel. Get your own. So from worst to best, here goes. Number 11, the Pen BBS 309. I pause to allow you to pick up your collective jaws off the floor. This Pen BBS 456 vacuum filler is the best pen that Pen BBS makes and one of the best pens that I own. But Pen BBS's piston filler isn't that great. It feels light and, pardon the expression, cheap in the hand and the piston sticks constantly. There's a good example of it right there. I haven't moved this piston in a while and it's stuck in the barrel and it's pushing itself out. I'm really hoping that Pen BBS will come out with a better design piston filler soon. And number 10, the Twisby Eco. Echo, ECO, economy. I think it stands for economy. This is the most inexpensive of the Twisby line and it looks and feels like it. Chunky, inelegant design, not a poster. A forced, brittle plastic section and a small nib, not to mention the constant and ongoing cracking issues. And number nine, the Majon T5. This is Moonman Majon's attempt to piss off Aurora as it's very similar to the Aurora Optima. It is heavy as it is lacquer over brass and doesn't post well either and has that same kind of meh Moonman nib on it. I replaced the nib on it with a calligraphy nib. And number eight, the Moonman T1. This is the one that started the Twisby and Caveco meltdowns. This is the pen that forced Moonman to change their name to Majon. I hate it. Sounds like a sign on an outhouse. The pen is okay. Typical Moonman number six size nib and a nice piston mechanism stolen from Theodore Kovacs in 1929. Well, don't talk too loud. Everybody will want one. What? <laughs> The cap doesn't post, or at least it shouldn't post. If you post it and then you turn that cap, you're going to have an inky mess in your lap. There's no clip, and the section is cool to the touch and a bit slippery. Number seven, the Tianzi Piston Filler. This is a good looking pen. Beautiful, clear, turned acrylic with a nice section and a decent steel nib. It doesn't post well at all, and again, should be avoided because it turns that piston as well, and you'll have an inky mess. That's not good. This is more like what Pen BBS should be making in a piston filler, actually. If Pen BBS made their piston filler similar to the Tianzi, it would be much more palatable for me, anyway. One drawback is it's difficult to get that piston mechanism out of there because the wrench that they provide with it doesn't fit the pen, nor does any other wrench for that matter. And then once you get it apart, you need a degree in engineering to get it back together again. That's why it remains uninked for me. I never, ever want to have to clean this pen again. And the Lorelei 667. Again, Pen BBS, take note of this fountain pen. If you made your Pen BBS 308 into something like this, I'd buy one in every finish. I know this pisses Pen BBS off because this is almost a direct copy of the Pen BBS 308. What a pisser. I've got a feeling that they're actually made in the same place. But this is a great pen. It has a swappable number six size nib, which is functionally and almost visually identical to the Pen BBS fine nib. And you can swap it out for all those wonderful calligraphy nibs that Pen BBS has in those nib fobs. Has a great section, posts well, feels great in the hand. The one drawback, it only seems to come in this one color, green. Yeah. And number five. The Wingsong 629. I just reviewed this pen last Sunday 
it comes in three colors now red blue black and it's available in either a steel nib or a 14 karat gold nib for a substantial markup which isn't worth the price in my opinion it also has a choice of ink window you can get the slotted one or a clear ink window and you can choose the classic cigar shape or this flat top and bottom shape that i think is reminiscent of the sailor pro gear it's a terrific pen for 38 dollars and number four the Hongdian N6. The last four pens in my list are really a toss up. The N6 is available in the stealthy black version or the version with the shiny gold cap. It's extremely well built, sports an ebonite feed, and this one has this marvelous long knife, long blade, uh, long spear, whatever your linguistic preferences are, nib, which creates beautiful line variation and in this stealthy black with the red rings it's a very good looking pen i use this pen a lot this pen gives your writing some flair without any effort whatsoever i do wish the nibs were swappable however i haven't found a nib that will swap into these hongdian pens and number three the hongdian n7 this is the flat top version of the hongdian n6 if you prefer a more pelican like feel this pen feels similar, although is nothing like the Pelican M800 for any money. The N7 has the same nib and feed and piston filling system of the N6. And if you mention you want the tool when you order your uh, Hongdian N6 or N7, they will include this little Hongdian tool that'll help you disassemble the piston. Lovely pen, post a little bit long, a little bit heavy in the cap beautiful pen beautifully made and number two the wingsung 618 this one is close to the top of the list because it's ridiculously inexpensive well built available in all kinds of colors writes the first time every time this pen was stored for at least a year with ink and i tried it and it wrote the first time and since i've replaced the usually boring steel hooded nib that comes with the pen with a nib from bobby uh, that has a mini food a upturned tip shape to it this pen has tons of character and is a great knock around pen posts beautifully takes a lot of ink and comes as i said in many different colors transparent and solid these pens are probably the bargain of the century and at 13 bucks you can buy a dozen of these for less than one narwhal nautilus and the number one pen on my list the wingsung 699 now, I don't technically have a 699 piston filler because I gave mine away to a subscriber as part of a giveaway a while back. This is the vacuum filler version of the pen, which I prefer over the piston filler. It's essentially the same pen in terms of writing and feel in the hand. This pen takes a lot of heat from Pilot 823 lovers, which means it must be very similar to that classic pen, with the Wingsung having two advantages. First, it's $260 cheaper and it comes in three colors, including this gorgeous transparent blue. Why Pilot doesn't offer the 823 in this transparent blue is beyond me. The Pilot does have an incredible nib in gold where this Wingsung is just okay. It's okay, it's smooth, it's nice. And I wish Wingsung, again, would make this pen compatible with Yovo number six size nibs. If you could put a Yovo gold nib on this pen, you'd have the best of both worlds for less than 200 bucks. Oh wait wonder if I can put my Wingsung 629 14 karat gold Wingsung nib on my Wingsung 699. They look like they're identical in size and shape and have the same kind of feed. Let's find out. Okay, well there are the two nibs. Here is the 14 karat gold Wingsung on the right and the steel one from the 699 on the left you can see they're slightly different in that this one has some divots cut out of it but uh, let's see whether it will go in this pen here is the feed from the 699 it's full of ink and i'm going to put it in there and we're doing this hot folks and there it is it fits very nice now we have to write with it
and it writes what do you know I know you can get these Wingsung 699s now with the 14 karat gold nib so I expected that was going to happen so there you go it is possible I wouldn't recommend this path however as it's stupid I mean you have to buy the gold version of the 629 first and buy a steel version of this 699 and swap the nibs ridiculously inexpensive but the 699 with a gold nib might be an excellent fountain pen I'll give it a try and we'll see whether it's better than an 823 of course I'll have to buy a pilot 823 to find out won't I we'll see and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please look in the description for a link to gold spot pens as i am now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at gold spot using my link you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you no discount no extra charge you can also join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote i made this